Hi there. My name is Nina Baradia, and I'm a somatic experiencing practitioner. Today, I want to talk with you about overcoming self-hatred. Now, this is a concept that is really foreign to many cultures in the East, as the famous story of the Dalai Lama not understanding a question by a Westerner around self-hatred talks about, because he couldn't even comprehend this. But those of us who grew up in the West have experienced so many messages around, you need to be like this to be loved, you need to be like that to be okay. And now this is happening all over the world. It's not just in the West anymore. So it's really everywhere. But I want to see if we could break this down a bit and see where does this originate from and how can we undo this? So one way to think about why a person would develop self-hatred, it really boils down to just a resistance of who one is, a resistance of oneself. But it's not true. It's all the conditioning that we've been exposed to. So the moment I'm told that a quality I have is not the quality that is the best one to have or the acceptable one to have in society, and I start comparing, I'm going to start to feel some resistance to how I am. And so we do this with so many different things in life that we want to start peeling back these layers and looking at them consciously, because a lot of these beliefs, they were made unconsciously before we knew better, while our brains were just open sponges <laughs> absorbing everything, you know, especially before the age of eight. And so we look at these unconscious beliefs and we start to make them conscious and we start to deliberately question and disprove them. So if I have a belief that a certain part of me is not okay, I need to start questioning the belief, but I also need to start asking, where did I first hear that? Because the thoughts that are in my mind, most all of them are not even original thoughts. You can think of the mind as a machine. Whatever it's put in, it spits it out. <laughs> and a lot of us think we are our minds. And I'll, um, I'll link some videos up here about ways to look at that differently. But we're actually the observer of the mind. The mind is a tool that's been given to us and it's not who we are. So it's really important that when you hear these thoughts, you're not just blindly buying into whatever thoughts are in your own head. And so we start questioning, where did I hear that from? Oh, someone said that to me on the playground when I was five. Another little kid. <laughs> Do I want to, what this little kid said to be ruling my adult life? <laughs> you know, starting to really question those things. And so exploring this resistance that we have to certain aspects of ourself is really important and clearing whatever feelings arise. And what's naturally going to remain is self-acceptance. Self-acceptance is the, really the basis of who we are naturally. That's how we came into this world, with this complete self-acceptance. And so it's undoing all of that conditioning. So remember not to identify with the mind or the conditioning. It's not the real you. The real you, the one who's watching the thoughts, the one who's watching the feelings. Maybe you can even think of yourself as, as the spiritual heart or the intuition in the heart. It's, it's not necessarily the emotional heart, which is always changing the emotions, but seeing if that feels like it could be the real you, because the real you loves you. Even if you think <laughs> that you hate yourself, the real you loves you unconditionally. That's just the truth. All of that other stuff is just overlying and clouding your experience of your true self. And I'll make some more videos about that as well, about who we actually are underneath. So I'd love to hear your comments below and feel free to ask any questions if you have them. Wishing you much peace and appreciation for who you are. Take care.